Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are talking about how AMC is to reach $61 this year, AMC shorts losing over $2 billion, how shorts are in debt, and many more in this video, so make sure you guys watch until the end. So yesterday, what we covered was this particular article which says that Wall Street analyst believes AMC stock is 72% undervalued. And again, what we saw was the fact that the change, you know, in terms of the opinions. However, he still maintains a neutral stance on the stock. And what we talked about was firstly, it is a good thing that we're seeing Wall Street analysts now changing the price targets on AMC because it obviously shows the positivity about AMC. However, what we did say was that again, it could be used as a way of lowering your sentiment on AMC because AMC is way um, above the 72% on the valuation that they are given here. If we take a look at this right now, according to Coindex Codex algorithm, AMC stock price could surge by 500% by 2024, reaching around $61 per share. So when we take a look at something that's obviously more realistic, and in my opinion, this is more realistic with everything that's happening, AMC is more likely to reach $61. And again, this is something that is completely possible, especially with everything that has happened for AMC. AMC, especially with everything that has been happening for AMC. Again, AMC right now at $4.30. What we have to understand is that $61 per share pre-split would have been only $6.01. And that's something that we've reached in the past before. And bear in mind, the fundamentals that we have now, uh, right now for AMC is way better than what it was back then for AMC. And so again, that's what I'm saying in terms of the fact that the 72%, yes, is a change in their perspective on AMC, but it could still be seen as a way of trying to lower your sentiment price on AMC because again like we talked about $61 per share is easily reachable and I still think that again this is only a small prediction I think that it can go way higher than that for AMC this year and so that's why again we're taking a look at um, in terms of what we need to look out for AMC. If we take a look at some of the you know the factors for AMC, AMC revenue is expected to recover to near pre-pandemic levels in 2024 with an average forecast of $4.67 billion. AMC has resolved the issue of its preferred shares conversion, which reduced its debt by $865 million in 2023 and improved its balance sheet. AMC is set for share gains in the fourth quarter of 2023 and 2024, thanks to its distribution of popular concert films such as Taylor Swift and the Eras Tour and the Renaissance, a film by Beyonce. AMC is well positioned to upgrade its European circuit with theater enhancements that will boost per screen averages and drive revenue growth. AMC is expected to return to positive EBITDA earnings before interest through the balance of 2024 and expand margins in 2025 over 2023. AMC has the largest domestic footprint of IMAX screens, which could benefit from the strong performance of the latest Doom movie in March 2024. So, you know, what we can see is all factors about AMC are improving. All fundamentals of AMC is improving. And so going back to what we talked about this, is it possible to reach $61 per share? Yes, it is. Whilst 500% may seem like a crazy percentage, what you have to understand is that there are mass large cap stocks that are flipping in terms of 100% in the billions and the trillions and so for amc right now with its market cap to go 500 percent to 61 dollars per share is easily doable considering the potential the long-term growth uh, the projections of amc and that's why again this article we may take it as good we could also take it as bad furthermore if you take a look in terms of the fact now what we understand is that for AMC, one of the biggest reasons why the price isn't going up is because it's being suppressed. And again, what we could see is that if the short sellers were to be in trouble and they don't have money to suppress AMC, naturally we would see the price of AMC going up. Well, if we take a look at this right now, damn bro, from 2.5 billion net income to almost 2 billion net loss in one year, talk about a sinking ship, no wonder execs are leaving. Well, we're talking about Citigroup and the Citigroup right now has a net loss of $1.8 billion decrease from a $2.5 billion of net income in the period year period, primarily driven by higher expenses, higher cost of credit and the lower revenues. And so that's where we are right now for Citigroup. And why is this important? Well, you have to understand Citigroup is someone who has been shorting AMC. And again, 
what we talked about in the past was how short sellers have actually changed their ways about AMC. We've seen some short sellers decrease their short exposure in AMC and increase their long exposure, hoping to obviously try and recover any losses. But we've also seen the short sellers actually decrease their long pressure and even double down on their short pressure. Now, Citigroup is one of the companies that has actually decreased their long exposure and increased their short exposure in AMC. And so for a group like Citigroup, for an institution like Citigroup, it's in their benefit that they suppress the price of AMC as much as possible. We also know that Citigroup obviously owns synthetic shares of AMC in the in the sense of the brazilian adr shares that we have talked about in the past and so seeing the fact that citigroup has now occurred losses it makes sense to why they're trying to double down in their position on amc but it also reflects the fact that the amc short position is definitely harming these short sellers who are of course um continuously being shorting amc and continuously are shorting amc because we've seen how they've gone from 2.5 billion dollars all the way to a loss of 1.8 and bear in mind is that this is from 2.5 billion dollars in the positive to 1.8 billion dollars in the negative and so this is way bigger than you think and again what we've talked about in the past was obviously the fact that short sellers who are taking losses are definitely trying to change up their perspective on amc and so you know what we could be seeing now is obviously the decrease in suppression as we see these short sellers losing and just like we talked about earlier the decrease in suppression will naturally allow the price of amc to obviously go up furthermore we can see is are you okay bro 42.85 percent increase in virtue's long-term debt ouch and so what we're seeing right now is the total depth for Virtue to be increasing. Now, Virtue, again, another short seller of AMC. And the reason why we're talking about this is because everyone has continuously talked about how AMC having debt is an extremely bad thing, and that's why it's going to go bankrupt. So if we're using the same logic, Virtue seeing an increase in debt and bear in mind amc has now decreased the debt what we're seeing is virtually actually increase in the debt if we bring the same argument over here does that mean that virtue is going to go bankrupt we know that virtue is also a company that shorts amc and again they have synthetics of amc they naked short amc they constantly bash amc as a company and so if the fact we see them increase debt firstly why are they increasing debt and again it's the same logic what we talked about here with city group how they are losing money virtue are increasing debt because it's in their benefit to suppress the price of amc as much as possible and again with the capital that they have right now they're not able to suppress amc the only way for them to suppress amc is if they borrow more money and dump more money into into amc short and so now just in terms of where does how do they borrow their money and how is the loan increasing well this is obviously the case by borrowing money you're obviously incurring a debt and so you know this is what we're talking about every short seller of amc right now despite the claims that they're trying to make of being uh in positive being in profit with the amc short in terms of being in a very healthy position as a firm these are all not the case because the case what we've seen right now is the short sellers who are quote unquote in profit with the amc shorts have not covered their position but rather they may be positive in the position that they are showing us but when we occur when we include the billions of synthetics that they have created for themselves they are in a massive loss and also what we talked about is the financing of the short position the cost to borrow or even the money that it costs to create the synthetics etc etc all of this are showing the fact that they are not in a good position furthermore what we can see is ICBC isn't the only one retiring a DTC clearing account today. What we have at this is additional account retirement common company LLC slash Susquehanna. Again, another company that is a short selling firm of AMC. And right now they're retiring a DTC clearing account. What we talked about in the past is that obviously if a participant is clearing a DTC clearing account, it could mean multiple things. It could mean nothing but it also could mean the fact firstly what we've seen is that the dtc does have not have enough money 
to help all its members uh, and its participants in terms of clearing positions if all of them were in the risk of default. And again, they are also trying to clear out anyone who has too big of an exposure to any risky and toxic short. And so Cisco HANA, a company that is shorting AMC and now retiring this account, could even mean firstly, they are at risk of default and DTC does not have enough money to bail them out. Or DTC has deemed this company to be holding onto shorts that are um, onto, holding onto short exposures that are too risky and too toxic and therefore wants them to retire the account. Again, like I said, it could mean multiple things, but with everything we talked about short sellers in this video, it does seem a little like it may be the latter. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.